And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Design for Murder. The trio in the big car, weaving its way through the evening traffic, seemed typical of almost any group on the way to a railroad station. Charles Gilbert at the wheel was responding patiently to the nervous admonitions of his wife, Edna. From the rear seat, his wife's close friend, Myrene Walker, chatted ceaselessly. Charles Gilbert, on the other hand, seemed lost in thought or patient resignation, all very typical as they pulled up at the railroad station and stepped out of the car. Charles, let me run on ahead for you. Check in this ticket. Uh, would you, Myrene? I'll get someone to take the suitcases. Oh, it's all such a bother. I wish I was staying home. Oh, well, you're not so forget it. Uh, we'll meet you inside, Myrene, the cocktail bar. Right. You heard how she wished she were going? She likes to travel. I don't, Charles. You know that. Well, never mind now. It's all arranged. You need the rest. A red cap. Yes, sir? Uh, these three bags. Oh, yes, sir. The limited car, 79, space B. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Well, come along, Edna. We'll drop in here, have a drink while we're waiting. Now, let's just relax, huh? Wait for Mark. I wish you weren't so anxious to have me out of town, Charles. At a time when the business needs me so. Oh, nonsense. Over here, Myrene. Here, darling. Everything's in order with your tickets. Mm, that's too bad. How do you like that, Myrene? She doesn't want to go. Thinks the jewelry business will go to pot. Thinks her husband plans a rendezvous with another woman. Oh, for <laughs> heaven's sake. Buy her a drink, Charles. You can buy me one, too. Waiter, if you don't mind, we're dying of thirst here. Two scotch and sodas here. Uh, Myrie? Fine, anything. Just bring it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now we'll all feel better. I'd feel better if I knew why you can't go along, Charles. I told you, Edna, I'll be busy. Also, I want you to go alone. You'll rest more. And you do need it. Look at her, Myrie. Not able to keep her hands still. Doodling on the menu. She's always doodling on something. Oh, give me that pencil, Edna. Sorry. It's a design I was thinking of for a piece of costume jewelry. Well, stop thinking of anything like that. And since it's going to bother you, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to be doing, dear. It was to be a surprise. A surprise? We talked about a beach house, remember? On Little Rock Point? I remember talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I bought one. Oh. A beautiful place. Completely surrounded by trees, a good half mile from the main road, and a quarter of a mile from the nearest neighbor. Hidden away like that, I don't see how you find your way out there. Oh, it's easy to get there. Here, I'll, I'll draw you a diagram to show you exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. Once you know where it is, you can find it blindfolded, if you follow these directions. Yes, you can, can't you? I'm having it remodeled inside, just for Edna. Oh, Charles, you aren't. <laughs> I am. Well, don't be too grateful. It's mostly your money. Oh, I don't care. It's the thought. Oh, Charles, I feel much better about the trip now. You do? Then give me a handkerchief. Look at it, Mary. Torn to shreds, Edna. When she's not doodling, she's tearing up a handkerchief. She's got to be doing something every minute. <laughs> and she wonders why I want her to rest. A drink, sir. Oh, good. And uh, get working on three more, please. My dear, you're going to relax, or I'll know the reason why. I, I'll try. Now we'd better get to the train. Well, 
Well, Charles, Edna's gone. And after Myrene leaves you, you hurry back to the cocktail lounge. And inside, you go directly to a corner booth. Slip in beside someone who's been waiting for you. Not too patiently. I'm sorry, Helen. Darling, I am too. I'm sorry that we have to practice this deception. Charles. Hmm. Kiss me. That was nice, dear. But we we ought to be more careful in public. We really shouldn't be here, you know. Oh, stop worrying. Here, I ordered you a drink. Oh, and I can use it. Ah, well, at least we'll have some time together, uninterrupted. You're sure Edna will be staying away for a while? She's gone for a month. It wasn't fun watching you kiss her goodbye. I know. Someday... Oh, I hope it's soon, Charles. Look, I want you to see the new place I bought at Little Rock Point. I'll pick you up and drive you down there tomorrow, or, uh... Maybe it would be better if uh, if you came in your car and met me there. Little Rock Point. Mm, that sounds wonderful. Oh, it is. You'll <laughs> love it. I've uh, I've been using quite a few of your ideas in redecorating the place. Can you make it by two? Yes, dear. I'll tell you exactly how to get there. Helen's an exciting girl, isn't she, Charles? And when you reach your apartment building, you have difficulty getting around to saying goodnight to her. And only the thought of seeing her again the next day at the beach house at Little Rock Point finally makes it possible. It's quite late when you finally arrive at your own home and let yourself into the house. You're scarcely inside when... Hello, son. Who could that be? Myrene. Yes, little Myrene. I'd like to come in, Charles, and to talk to you. Well, of course. Well, come straight to the point. Well, about what? About you and Edna and that little number you met in the cocktail lounge. It wasn't a very pretty sight, Charles, seeing you kiss her right after bidding Edna goodbye. Oh, why, uh... Go on. Make it good. She, uh, that girl, uh, Helen. Uh... An old friend. That's right. Someone you knew before you ever met Edna. <laughs> Why, that's it exactly. Uh-huh. And she just won't leave you alone. My Irene, you're positive. I'm not psychic. You're not nearly as slick as you think you are, Charles. <laughs> no wonder Edna's a bundle of nerves. You're not going to say anything to Edna about this. It depends on you. I don't suppose you've made any dates for the future with this um, Helen. Oh, certainly not. Hmm. You know, Charles, you weren't kidding when you made that remark about Edna's money. You've had it pretty easy since becoming her business manager and now her husband. Well, it's been a pleasant arrangement, if that's what you mean. Well, naturally, I love Edna. I hope you mean that. Oh, Myrene, that, this girl means nothing, I swear it. I'll not see her again. Look, in a few days, you and Arthur drop down to the place at Little Rock Point. You'll see all that I'm doing for Edna. I'll take you around the place. We can relax, go for a swim. I don't swim, Charles. And when my best friend's husband starts two-timing her, I don't feel like relaxing either. Irene, I've told you... I heard you and I've told you, Charles. Stay away from that girl. You know, friends, in addition to being summer, this is also the time of year when more and more drivers switch to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Vacation-minded folks just naturally go for Signal's good mileage. But mileage, mind you, is only half of Signal's story. Just you talk with a few Signal customers, and you'll find they're equally enthusiastic about Signal's performance. After all, in order to give you such good mileage, today's Signal gasoline has to help your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you also enjoy quick starting, proud pickup, and smooth purring power, the things that make driving a real pleasure. So to get the most out of your vacation travel dollars, make the friendly Signal stations you'll find throughout the Pacific Coast states your headquarters for happy mileage. 
And even if you're not planning a vacation trip, well, any time is a good time to power your car with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. It's going badly, isn't it, Charles? Myreen knows about your girlfriend, Helen. Knows that it was more than husbandly concern that prompted you to encourage your wife, Edna, to leave town on a vacation, a rest cure for her nervousness. Myreen has always been Edna's best friend. And she'll tell her the truth if you don't do something to reassure her that you don't intend to see Helen again. You wish you hadn't made the date with Helen for the following afternoon at the beach house at Little Rock Point. And after she arrives, you're very nervous all the time that she's there with you. What is it, Charles? You haven't heard anything I've said. Oh, yes, I have, Helen. It's just, well, I'm a little jumpy. Oh, I thought with your wife out of town. Uh, Helen, uh, we've got to talk about that. It, it isn't as perfect as it seems. Oh? A friend of Edna's, uh, Myrene Walker. She knows about us. Knows what about us? Well, not everything, of course. She... She thinks it's a casual thing that we're old friends, happen to run into one another. And... Oh, if she continues to see us together. That's right. She'll go to Edna. Helen, we've got to forget about it for a while. Forget about it? Well, you know, I really don't mean that exactly. Well, I should hope not. You promised me you were going to talk to Edna, ask for a divorce. I know, and I intend to, but it can't be right away, Helen. I have my reasons. Right now, it's important that that you leave, that, that we're not seen together. Well. All right, Charles. I won't need a second invitation. Oh, now, wait a minute. I've I... waited long enough as it is. Quite long enough. Goodbye, Charles. But, but Helen, I... Goodbye, Charles. She's gone, isn't she, Charles? And only a few moments later, you hear her car start up, roar away, and you're alone... Alone in the house that you were supposed to be remodeling for your wife, Edna. And as the rest of the afternoon drags by, you find yourself hating the place. And you'll always hate it, unless somehow soon the house can be yours and Helen's. Just how you're going to bring that about isn't quite clear to you yet, is it? How you'll get rid of your wife, Edna. That evening, as you're sitting alone, wishing you return to town, you're still thinking about it when suddenly you're aware of a noise outside... Maureen. Well, well, this is a surprise. Hello, Charles. Snooping around, were you? All right. Call it that if you want. <laughs> You're wasting your time, really. I'm quite alone. Are you? Of course. Come on in, Maureen. I'd like to show you around the place. Like a child caught at the cookie jar, Maureen follows you inside. She's nervous, ill at ease. Avoid your gaze as you show her about the house. And then finally, the two of you end up at the boat landing. Well, what do you think of it? It's very nice, Charles. They kind of like it? No, I don't. This isn't the sort of house Edna would like at all. It just doesn't suit her personality, let's say. Really? I'm sure there isn't a thing here that would interest her. Outside of that unusual painting in the living room. They're rather nice, isn't it? Impressionistic, I believe they call that sort of thing. Well, to me, it looks like a dragon about to devour something. Well, it is a painting of a dragon. But Edna likes offbeat things like dragons. I bought it especially for her. A surprise. Oh, really, Charles? And just what does that mean? May I be blunt? Feel free. You didn't buy this house for Edna. When does Helen move in? Now, see here, Myra. You see here. It's a glamorous place, Charles. Exciting. Should just match her baby blue eyes. Myrene, you're... You're not fooling me for one minute. And you won't fool Edna, either. She's going to know all about this. You're not going to tell her about Helen. Edna's my best Myrene, friend. Myrene, I think I've had just about enough of your meddling. Charles, wait. Just about enough. Stay away from me. I ought to wring your neck, you little snoop. Charles! Charles! <laughs> You reached out to grab Myrene as she tripped, but you're too late. And she plunged off the end of the boat landing. Charles, help me! Help me! I can't swim! Charles! 
You stand there, staring down at her, struggling in the water. She can't swim, child. She'll drown if you don't help her. And you don't help her, do you, child? You're glad the house is isolated, aren't you, child? Yes. You're certain no one except the late Myrene Walker knows you've been here. But you decide to hurry back to your home in town. Establish a reasonable alibi. Two hours later, you're back in your house in town, where you nervously await the phone call you're certain you'll receive. Hello? Mr. Gilbert? Yes? This is Frank Stanley over on the East Shore. One of your neighbors at Little Rock Point. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, Mrs. Stanley. Would have called you sooner, except I had the devil's own time getting hold of your phone number up there in town. What is it? Something wrong? Well, yeah. A woman drowned off the island a few hours ago. What's that? Yep. Thought you probably know her. Police found her purse on your boat landing. Identified her as, uh, uh Myrene Walker. Myrene Walker? Good Lord. Oh, you do know her? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, she's a very dear friend of my wife. Sorry, Mr. Gilbert. This probably wouldn't have happened if I'd been out there. I, I'd planned to, but business kept me here in town. Myrene must have come out to visit us, wandered around in the dark, and... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, sort of the way I figured it, too. Well, uh, thank you for calling, Mr. Stanley. I, I'll get in touch with my wife right away. You smile, don't you, Charles, as you hang up the receiver. It's all over now. Myrene is dead. You could have saved her, but you didn't. And you couldn't have Myrene telling your wife about Helen, could you? Later that day, you send a wire to Edna at the resort. Inform her that you have some bad news. Ask her to return immediately. And that evening, you decide to go back to the house on Little Rock Point. Perhaps take a walk along the beach. See if you can learn news of the local reaction to Myrene's drowning. As you hurry up the path, you're startled to see a light burning in the living room. Helen, yes, She's probably paid you a surprise visit. Good evening, Charles. Edna. Found the key under the mat, so I came on in. I've been waiting hours for you. But I, I don't understand. I, I sent the telegram only a few hours ago. Telegram? Well, it must have missed me. I left Yuma this morning. But, but why? Here. Perhaps this letter will explain. Myrene sent it to me. Myrene? Yes. Her letter told me all about your little friend, Helen. Read it. See for yourself. Oh, now, Edna, surely Myrene you don't... Irene wouldn't lie. But, Edna, I... You needn't bother to deny it. Well, you've got to let me explain. Now. Let's drop the matter here and now. You see, Charles, I've thought it over very carefully. I've decided to forgive you. Forgive me? Yes. I'm really much more to blame for Helen than you are. I... I don't understand. Well, perhaps I drove you to her. I haven't been a very good wife, Charles. More than a little neglectful. Thinking too much about business and not enough about us, our home, our marriage. Well, we haven't been as close in the past few years as we used to be, Edna. Yes, yes, I know. I know, and it's all my fault. I'm willing to forget all this, Charles, but... Of course, you must forget Helen. Of course. Uh, fix me a drink, will you? I could use one. All right. I could use one myself. Charles. Yes? You said something about a telegram. Oh, yes. Yes. Well? Uh, bad news, I'm afraid. It's, uh, it's about Myrene. What's happened? Well, apparently she came out here last night while I was in town, and while she was wandering around outside in the dark, she, she fell off the boat landing. She what? Yes, she drowned, Edna. Police recovered her body this morning. Irene, drowned. Oh, easy now, darling. It's a terrible shock, I know. Uh, here, this will help. Oh, Charles, Charles, the poor dear. Well, if I'd been here, I don't suppose it would have happened. At least the lights on the boat landing would have been on. Wait a moment. You said you were in town. Yes, at the house all evening. But you weren't. W what? You weren't at the house in town, I know, because I called you from the resort half a dozen times. There was no answer. But I tell you, Edna... Where I... were you last night, Charles? Where were you when Myrene had her accident? Answer me. Listen, Edna. You were here when Myrene came. She knew about Helen. You were afraid she'd tell me. You didn't know she already sent me this letter, did you? Well, did you? All right, all right. So I was here. And Myrene 
Jim's death wasn't so accidental. Was Wait a minute. Where are you going? To the sheriff's office. Edna, now listen. Let go of me. I Trust. didn't have anything to do with my Irene's death. You've got to believe me. It was an accident. We'll let the police decide. Now, you let go of me. I see. No, Edna. You're not going to the police. Charles. Charles, don't look at me like that. What are you... Edna. She's fainted, hasn't she, Charles? Fainted and crumpled to the floor at your feet. And you know as you stare down at her that you had murder in mind in your heart as you stared at her. And it isn't over, is it? No. You can't let her go to the police with her story, Charles. And looking down at Edna lying unconscious before you, a thought suddenly occurs to you. It's a way out, isn't it? A way out for you and Helen. Quickly, you pick up the folded sheet of paper, the letter Myrene wrote to Edna, stuff it into your pocket. Then you carry Edna outside, place her in the car she drove down, and drive it into the garage, and close the garage doors, leaving the motor running. Wait. An hour later, and it's all over. Later, you drive Edna's body back to town in her car, put the car in your garage, again leave the motor running as you close the garage doors. Now all you need to do is return to the beach house and wait for Edna's body to be found in the garage. Knowing Edna as you do, you're certain she told no one of her return from Yuma. And you're sure no one saw her at the house at Little Rock Point. But you know, you must get back there before her body is discovered. You take a bus back to the beach house. The next morning, walk the half mile to the home of your nearest neighbor, Mr. Stanley. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gilbert. Good morning, Mr. Stanley. I wonder if I might use your phone. Sure, sure. Ours hasn't been installed yet. Well, come on in, come on in. Sure was too bad about the lady that drowned, wasn't it? Yes, it's going to be a terrible shock for my wife. I'm almost afraid to tell her. They were very close. Oh, you mean she doesn't know yet? Well, my wife is vacationing at a desert resort. I sent her a wire yesterday after you called me asking her to come home, but I, I haven't heard a word from her. I, mm. I'm rather worried. Sure, sure you are. Uh, there's the phone over there. Help yourself. Thank you. Hello, operator. I'm calling the Shadow Hills Ranch, Yuma, Arizona. Yes, that's right. Thank you. I'm terribly sorry to barge in on you like this, Mr. Stanley. Oh, it's all right. It's quite all right. It's just that I'm so concerned about my wife, Edna. I can't understand why she hasn't arrived or even answered my wire. It isn't like it. Hello? Yes? Oh, uh... The number is 929. Oh, I'm calling from Harbor 929, operator. Yes. Hello? The Shadow Hills Ranch? Is Mrs. Charles Gilbert there? This is Mr. Gilbert. What? Oh. Yeah, yes, I see. Thank you. Is something wrong, Mr. Gilbert? They said she left the ranch yesterday morning. She was on her way back to town. I can't understand it. Where is she? No, 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 Mr. Gilbert. No need to get all worried. She'll turn up. Well, oh, something is wrong. I know it. I, I'd better call the police. Well, I'm not sure if it make you feel any better. Well, if anything's happened to my wife, Mr. Stanley, I, I don't know what I'd do. I just don't know. <laughs> Here's some hot weather mathematics for motorists. Take the temperature of the day. Add 2,800 degrees, the temperature inside the cylinder head of the average motor. That adds up to a lot of heat. Good reason why your motor needs the protection of Signal's wonderful new heavy-duty type oil that's engineered to stand up under heat. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. Because it controls harmful engine deposits such as carbon, gum, and varnish, new Signal Premium keeps your engine clean keeps hydraulic valve lifters from sticking, keeps oil rings free to seal in power and prevent oil consumption. And in addition, new signal premium stops acid corrosion. So you can now stop worrying about all these causes of costly repair jobs. Best of all, you get all this extra protection at no increase in price at signal service stations. So if you want to keep maintenance costs down and your car's performance up, Make your next oil change a change to this remarkable signal motor oil 
that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Change to new Signal Premium Motor Oil. You've carried it off very well, haven't you, Charles? The role of the worried husband, concerned over his wife's whereabouts. And your phone call to the police brings quick results. An hour later, the sheriff calls on you at the house on Little Rock Point, quietly informs you of your wife's death, carbon monoxide, in the garage of your home in town. You continue to play the part now of the grief-stricken husband, and inwardly you're pleased, certain your performance has more than convinced the sheriff. Then, as he's about to leave you... Oh, Mr. Gilbert, uh, you said you were alone here last night? Yes, yes, that's right. I, I waited all night for my wife to show up. You sure she didn't? Well, of course not. She'd never set foot in this house. I, I bought it only a few days ago, shortly before she went on a vacation. Oh, I see. Why? Why do you ask? I was just looking at the painting of that dragon. Impressionistic stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yes, that's right. I understand your wife was always drawing quite a doodler. Yes, she doodled constantly. That's just a nervous habit, though. I was sort of wondering about that dragon picture. Looks very familiar. It's an original. I had it sent out from New York. Yeah? That sure is different. It was a present for my wife. She never got to see it. She wasn't with you when you bought it? No. She didn't even know it existed. Maybe you'd better look at this. A letter? An empty envelope. Addressed to your wife at Yuma. From Myrin Walker. Found it in your wife's purse. From the postmark, she must have gotten it the same day she left Yuma. Well, what about it? Turn it over. All right, but I... You say your wife didn't even know of the existence of that dragon painting, Mr. Gilbert. Well, yes, You I... also said she wasn't here at Little Rock Point yesterday. Y yes, I did. Then you've got a lot of explaining to do, Mr. Gilbert. The doodling on this envelope your wife had is an excellent copy of that dragon painting. I think we can prove it's your wife's doodling, Mr. Gilbert. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. And before you start your vacation trip, be sure to ask your signal dealer for a free copy of Lane's Guide, a booklet prepared by an independent travel organization to help you find good eating and lodging places. While no pocket-sized booklet can include all the good hotels, motels, and dining places, Lane's Guide covers a representative selection in hundreds of cities and towns. And a copy of this handy publication is yours free at Signal Stations. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Bill Johnstone, Mary Lansing, Joe Gilbert, Michael Ann Barrett, Herbert Litton, and Charles Seal. Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for the Horace Height Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.